Hey YouTube, just wanted to show you my solar ammo box generator 2.0. <laughs> uh, for this particular design, um, what I did differently from my previous ones is literally the, the, the box, the ammo box itself is different. Uh, this is from Flambeau, uh, made in the USA. Very square uh, design versus the uh, my previous build. It had a tapered uh, bottom here, made it a little bit difficult uh, for sizing and batteries. You know, they seem to fit, but then they get pretty snug as they get down to the bottom. So it was causing a little bit of challenges there. Um, number one <laughs> suggested feedback versus my uh, 1.0 build is a voltmeter. So it's there now. Uh, actually I actually have a switch. Uh, for it, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, USB 12 volt socket. Again, you can put whatever socket you want in your design. Uh, this is something uh, that I did uh, for you know. Again, my goal for this is you know charging electronic devices and cameras and whatever else. It's uh, leverages again under 100 watts. Don't want to go nuts. Um, you know that was the whole point in my original design. Now I have a lot of other things that I want to do, build bigger designs. A lot of people have asked me to do that, you know, so show assembly builds and all that stuff. Uh, it's on the to-do list. Just uh, please be patient with me. Uh, this is a hobby. Again, just trying to share the information for, you know, so others can learn and do what they want to do for their particular uh, use case. So, uh, it's just like the other one, the using the Powerlet plug and socket love these going to continue to use them as long as they scale for my needs i believe there's a 15 amp uh, limit on this particular uh, design but these come from the motorcycle industry and was recommended from several people to take a look at that uh, when i was initially using these there's a rubber boot uh, for a seal keeps it nice and nice and tight down there from uh, getting debris and uh, moisture now this was a switch that i had this is the main power switch a 10 amp resettable uh, fuse that I just like I did in my previous build was this the ideal switch no I, but I had it I spent the money wanted to leverage it uh, it works it lights up uh, just like a light switch I went in this direction to you know on and off uh, like a household switch uh, so if, you know one of my my kids or my wife wanted to use this they would just get it just turn it on just like a light it lights up great uh, works perfect and then nothing on the back uh, but the, the latch so let's pop this open and pull the lid off get that out of the way what we have inside is very similar uh, to what I had before the uh, Jensen uh, Jenison I'm sorry this is the GB-10 because it's a 10 amp uh, max load on this particular one I posted a other video around uh, I used the GB-5 GB and the main difference is this uh, again that's a 5 amp one this is 10 amp but this only has a connection for battery and for solar input uh, and there's no load out so the load you have to do with the wiring a little bit differently you wire it directly into the battery the upside with that is that you can get more draw out of it if you had heavier loads but again this is just a 10 amp hour 12 volt battery so you can't go nuts um, but you can do again uh, the 80 percent depth of discharge versus uh, 50 percent so that's the the big bonus there same batteries i had my other one uh, you know around nine pounds to three pound difference when you go from lead acid to lithium iron phosphate very stable uh, non-toxic uh, the list goes on and on i, I kind of have another video that i covered uh, all the benefits of going uh, with the lithium iron phosphate. The how uh, you see the wiring for the sockets here. This is something I'm not really thrilled with with the uh, voltmeter. I had to bend the the, um, the terminals there to get them out of the way of the battery. It's not ideal. It works. Uh, not the cleanest design. Something that I had to just kind of get over. It works. It's not ideal. Uh, but again, future builds. I'll. I'll try to avoid those and, and keep it as clean as possible. There's the wiring for the switch, the fuse, and the obviously the positive and negative for the, uh, the, the battery. And then there's the uh, switch uh, for the uh, voltmeter. So you can turn that on and off and 
uh, if you don't want to look at that display, maybe you're camping at night and you, you're charging, you don't want to have uh, that volt uh, meter on and causing uh, ambient light. Uh, it's red, which is ideal at night, so it's not going to mess with your night vision. That's why I went with that particular color. There's a lot of colors you can, you can get on Amazon and other places uh, that are widely available. So, again, turn the switch on, light turns on, I'm good, I'm energized. Uh, the voltmeter uh, comes on. I know it's probably a little tough to see that, uh, but again, I turn that switch on and off. It um, shuts that voltmeter. Uh, lift this up. You can see the light on for the uh, USB ports, and then the 12 socket or 12 volt socket. Uh, in a future build, uh, I'm going with a different, um, higher quality uh, sockets. Uh, these work. You know, nothing wrong with them. Uh, but I, they're kind of a little flimsy. Uh, I'm not sure how they'll hold up in the long run. But again, it's all a matter of, you know, what you care about. Uh, something that I, you know, hoping that I'll be using for a long time. If they have any problems, I can I can swap them out. But there's some other brands that I found. You pay a little bit more, but they're uh, true. I would say high quality marine grade type sockets that I I foresee, um, you know, lasting a lot longer and being a lot more durable. Uh, from a wear and tear perspective um, not really much else to show there you know there's the uh, you know this bracket was nice too it was able to fit in there so I wanted to do it, it makes it um, before I had to use bushings and and uh, rubber uh, gaskets and what I liked about this is I stuck with this and it, it created a much more firmer um, hold against this when you're plugging uh, in and out of here. You don't have to worry about using bushings and finding the right sizes. I kind of had to do some uh, digging around and going to different uh, local hardware stores to find the right matchup uh, there. But I'm happy with this. I'm going to be sticking with these uh, with these plates. Uh, again, no screws. I'm not you know, protruding anything because when you screw these in, the backs, you know, basically you're, you're compressing, compressing them on as you're tightening those up. So uh, nothing is, you know, a, a lot less holes compared to, you know, again, you have to drill four holes, worry about sealing them up. Uh, again, the unit's not waterproof. It's just, I would say it's water resistant and it should be, uh, especially when you go camping and, uh, you know, nothing's ideal there. Um, you know, from a camping perspective, right? Stuff gets wet you, you, and that's what I wanted to design it for. The other thing that's different compared to the other build is there is no uh, bolts. I didn't need any bolts to hold the battery in place. Uh, this is uh, heavy duty Velcro. Uh, that was another suggestion by one of you guys. I appreciate it. I went with that. Uh, holds that battery in place. Uh, you know, it's not moving uh, around. I'm not worried about it uh, because of the weight. It's it's three pounds versus nine. Uh, it's not doesn't fly around. I've 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 used this quite a bit. Uh, tested it, uh, charged it up uh, today. We had a beautiful weather today, a lot of great sunshine. I have a 50 watt panel. Uh, I have a video on that uh, if you care, but it's kind of like watching paint dry when you watch these things charge. Uh, I just plug them in, walk away, and uh, it brings them up to snuff in a matter of a couple hours. So uh, the the one issue that I still am struggling with, and, and there really isn't, uh, unless you guys have got suggestions, when you go with these lithium iron phosphate, and actually in any lithium battery configuration, um, there's there's a lot of different uh, lithium chemistries out there for these batteries. Uh, these batteries, this is from uh, Biano Power, uh, and there's others out there. Uh, I, I work with these guys. The, the Kevin has been great. Every time I ask him ask him a question, he responds within 24 hours with uh, with answers, and it's, he's been fantastic. Um, but the BMS, which is the battery management system for these batteries, it stops them from um, over discharging, uh, over voltage, under voltage, you know, all the things you cut off. So you're not, basically it, it stops the batteries from getting destroyed. Uh, so you're not overcharging them or over discharging them. The problem I'm having is versus lead acid, lead acid has been around forever. Um, you know, you get these nice charts showing you the, you know, depth of discharge and, you know, percentage of battery. Uh, left in here, it, it doesn't quite work that way with these batteries. Uh, yeah, you can, you know, right now it says uh, 14 volts. It's a little hard for even for me to see out in the daylight, but uh, it's 14 volts. And 
you know, you can start drawing power from it and it's great and it kind of hovers, it gets down to like 13.3. Um, but you know, it cuts off, I believe at around 10 and, I, and I'll, I'll double check that, but I think it's around 10 volts. Um, but when it cuts off, it cuts off, uh, the BMS protects the battery, stops you from, uh, going any further from that. Uh, so you don't damage it. Uh, the main problem I'm still having is how to basically kickstart the BMS, uh, to charge back up when you're, um, you know, if you're out camping and you let this thing go down to 80%, it cuts it off. That's great, but then when you go to plug in the solar, uh, it doesn't wake up, right? The BMS uh, doesn't come back on and allow you to charge the battery. I've cheated. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I've actually taken the the leads from the solar panel uh, and just touched them onto the battery real quick to give it a jolt. Uh, and it tends to wake up the BMS uh, long enough to just kind of plug it in. Uh, there was a suggestion somebody um, recommended using a grill igniter switch that would give it a jolt. But what I'm finding is that those do generate enough voltage, just not enough amperage to uh, wake the BMS up. I built one, bought a, um, a grill igniter, tried it, wired it up, did the same thing, and, and it wasn't enough oomph uh, to wake it up. So still something I'm trying to figure out what the ideal scenario is, but... Um, Again, what I've done is I just, I have a, uh, I use the uh, Anderson power pole connectors. Those things are great. Uh, you, know, you can quickly disconnect and connect those if you want to change them out. So what I do is I just have these alligator clamps, clamp them on there, plug it directly in the solar panel briefly, right? Just to give it a zap and it wakes it up, uh, wakes the BMS up and then I plug it back in and, uh, and then charge it up no problem. So uh, maybe that is the ideal scenario. Um, I was hoping for something maybe a little bit more elegant, but uh, that's what I've had. So still trying to figure that part out, what's ideal. And again, the other thing that would be great would just to be a nice simple meter um, or a chart uh, based on voltage, but you can't really go off of that. These batteries go from, um, you know, they'll hover in the 12s for a while, and then all of a sudden just tr drop, you know, go down and, and, and they cut themselves off. So it's not like a gradual uh, cutoff. So uh, that's it. Uh, nothing really else to, to, to uh, discuss about this particular build. Uh, from an ammo box perspective, this size, uh, again, thanks to the, uh, the, the folks at Flambeau uh, that, that, that sent me this uh, to build it. Um, I appreciate it. They actually sent me a big care package, so I'm going to be using uh, their bigger cases and build bigger designs from this. And uh, I'll circle back when I've got those built. And uh, a lot of you have asked for more assembly videos. Uh, that's something I will... Uh, I will take in consideration when I'm doing these um, and uh, get those out. But what I'm finding is uh, people don't watch videos longer. They tend to watch about more than uh, about five minutes. So I can't assemble these in five minutes. It takes a lot longer than that. So, um, but we'll see, we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll try a couple of different things and go from there. Okay, thanks. If you like these videos, uh, click on like, uh, let me know and subscribe and I'll keep at it. Thank you.